Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can just so we can get out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. The Boston Celtics came into their last game against the Detroit Pistons without Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, and Sam Hauser. They needed guys to step up in order to keep the ship afloat, and today I'm going to look at the play of a couple bench guys I think helped the team. So let's get into the film. All right, so if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, make sure you take your shoes off before you come in the house. And the first guy we're going to start with is Peyton Pritchard. He had 23 points and seven assists in this game and he did start this game of course without drew holiday but he's usually a part of our bench with our normal rotation so he's still gonna be in this video and just the playmaking jump he's taken this year the game has seen a slowing down for him his processing is better his handle he's just craftier and he's just more i don't know he's just a really really good player now off the bench and this is a guy that's gonna get some playoff time he's always pushing the pace that's something i love about Peyton Pritchard is that his competitive stamina is in is crazy right he he's always picking up 94 feet he's always pushing the pace and here he drives right into isaiah stewart draws Jaden ivy a little bit this is an easy read because ivy is just lost even though he looks at Jalen, he's still but nonetheless still a good read pushing the pace by Peyton Pritchard and Pritchard is just a really, really smart player. He played a lot in college. You know, he's very experienced. He came into the league as a season guard. And for somebody that's about 6'2", he plays bigger than his size suggests because he's always using his shoulder. He's always slowing down. He's always trying to create angles. And he uses his body really well. So here, he's probing off the pick and roll. He's just lowering Evan Fourier deeper into the paint. And then you see right there, uses that off arm legally, and he gets the pull up. And we all know he can shoot a three ball at any angle. He shoots 38% from three, shoots 39% from that right wing area here in transition. He does not see the defense come up to him any closer, so he pulls up for three. And in this third quarter, Payne Pritchard went on a magical playmaking run. There was about four straight plays where he's just back to back to back. He's just making plays for the Celtics with his passing. And here, this is a little bit on the Pistons just not being a good team. But he rejects the Porzingis screen and neither Wiseman or Ivy even act like Porzingis is there so he does the behind the back pass here and it leads to a Porzingis three all right so here we are in transition and Jalen Brown gives it up on selfish play by him and just another nice behind the back pass by Peyton Pritchard so we have two guys on Jalen Brown he sees Pritchard open a good left hand pass and Pritchard just on the money with the behind the back he sees Flynn coming over from Jalen Brown to him the guy that's trailing Xavier Tillman is running full speed but as soon as Payne gets the ball he stops he thinks he's gonna shoot a little deception there and X gets the layup all right so this is just a perfect example of Peyton Pritchard using his craft to get where he wants and to get his teammates open shot like this corner three from speed so here I'm guessing that Flynn is expecting Pritchard to use the screen he he rejects it and he takes off right so now he has ivy who picks up on him he uses the euro step he hits ivy to jump and here number 18 initially does a great job of taking away his first read which is the corner right so he sees pritchard he sees ivy helps and he slides over to the corner but what Peyton pritchard does is again he just uses his craft he uses the movement of the ball and then he's looking at tillman the first time so now this guy is very confused he has two guys to check and pritchard using his craft and the movement of the ball and the no look pass gets for you a wide open three and Pritchard had a lot of other shots in this game he was just getting things really easy he took what the game gave him and here it's a deep three over James Wiseman late in the game and next up is Lou Cornette who had a really good game he only had four points but he had 10 rebounds six of them were offensive he had two steals and he had three blocks and he was a plus nine at 26 minutes and Lou is really becoming a real lob threat on this team so here he's a guy that is great to do dribble handoffs where he's a good passer he knows how to screen and he gets out of those roles well enough to get the lobs and Jalen brown hits him in for a lob and something that was really encouraging in this game is luke going up against a stronger front court like isaiah stewart and Jalen duran he not only held his own but he won the matchup as far as the physicality right the offensive rebounds and here he just blocks Jalen duran one of his three blocks and something that people have said about luke is that sometimes when he goes up against a more physical guy it can kind of take him off his game and he's not playing his size because he's not the most physical big in the world but it was really encouraging to see him go at Jalen Dern and Isaiah Stewart and beat them at their own game, which is physicality. And I bet you did not have this in your bucket list to see on Celtics film, Luke Cornette's gravity as a roller. So he sets the screen and watch how he rolls hard. Watch, look at Isaiah Stewart. He's worried about Luke Cornette. 
So now that gives Chris Porzingis an open three, and of course he knocks it down. And again, he was really on the glass in this game. 10 rebounds in 26 minutes, six of them were offensive. It didn't matter who's in the game, Dern, Stewart, or Wiseman, and he gets himself a second opportunity. And again, his activity on the offensive glass, two tap-ins and a basketball guard reward him. It was just really good to see Luke use his physicality and some of his touch and his finesse in his game. His energy was rewarded by this bucket. And this was one of the more impressive plays to me. James Wiseman, who has been playing solidly of late, is a guy that is more athletic than Luke, and he just goes up really strong here. But Luke, impacting the shot, sends it back, but Isaiah Stewart ends up getting a layup. But just a great block by Luke again, and he just played really aggressive in this game, and I loved it. And again, here he is on the dribble handoffs. He rolls, and here, again, Derek White shoots, and the activity on the boards, tapping it up, getting the Celtics another opportunity. He catches the ball. He swings it out to Springer who then gets fouled on the drive. And this was really impressive too, seeing Luke move laterally and then getting up to get the block. So here Sasser comes out the pick and roll. He's the drop man. He does a little in and out. He thinks it's enough space, but Luke, great job getting off his feet after that. But again, they get the layup. And here he does a nice job playing the pick and roll. So Ivy comes off it. It does help having Chris Stapps here. So now Cornette is able to play in between Ivy and Duran. He tries to lob it up, Luke steals it. And again, you know we gotta show love to my boy, Xavier Tillman. I have numerous videos talking about his defensive prowess. He literally guards one through five. He's one of the best switching big men in the league. And it's just amazing to watch him move laterally because of his body type. And you've seen him run in a straight line. He's not super fast, but laterally, his movements, he just knows how to guard it here. On Evan Fournier, he switches on to him, and he's again above the three-point line. He jumps out on guys when he switches them. He gets the block here. And here he switched on to Malachi Flynn, who's a lot quicker than him. It doesn't matter. The first crossover, nope, doesn't work. First crossover, doesn't work. He reaches at it. Second crossover, nope, doesn't work. He loses the ball. And then the possession is finished by Peyton Pritchard playing good defense to end the shot clock. And then here again, being able to guard one through five, he comes off the corner because he sees Duran slip into the paint, bangs his body, he doesn't let him get the layup, and we get the ball. And if you saw my last vid about him being a chess piece on the defensive side of the ball, it's everything is the versatility plus the steals slash deflections. He is towards the top of the league in steals and deflections per 75 possession. And here, he gets one there, almost saves it, they get the ball back, but then he gets another deflection along with Sfi at the end. And then here again, switched on to Malachi Flynn. He rejects the screen, Tillman is quick enough laterally to get there before he does, and then he's also super strong and he uses his hands well and he does it legally, right? So he's putting his hands on him to turn the drive, he's taking away his quickness, he's sliding his feet and he can test the layup. And then here he's on Flynn again, Flynn drives, tried to use the behind the back dribble to no avail, Tillman blocks it. And last but not least is Jaden Springer. I want to start off by saying that he has a ways to go to even sniffing being a rotational piece for the Celtics, like an actual rotational piece. But when you trade for a guy that's probably going to be your 11th or 12th man, you want to see traits. And Jaden Springer, athletically, defensively, and hustle-wise, he plays the game the right way. He's hard-nosed. Those are the traits that you can objectively see when you watch him that made Brad Stevens trade for him. There's something there that they can mold. And if he ever is able to hit an outside shot, this is a guy that can really play in his league. And here, he gets on the floor. He gets to sell this another possession. White gets a wide open three, but he just misses it. And here, the hustle. The Celtics, I have the best offensive rebound in the pinch unit I've ever seen. O'Shea, that's what he specializes in. He comes in the game and he crashes the offensive boards. He gets two or three every game, no matter how long he's in. O'Shea did not get his own tab today. Sorry, O'Shea, I still love you, brother. But again, Jaden and O'Shea just fighting. They didn't score here, but the hustle you gotta love as a coach. And here, the athleticism, the lateral quickness, and the POA defense. Here, he's pressuring that half court. That's gonna be a theme in some of these clips. He's always up on the guy he's not letting them get into screens easily and here and he kind of reminds me of like a sticky slot corner right he's on him screen navigation the first time he gets hit by the flip by Dern but he gets under it and he forces Sasser to pass it and the miss by Dern and here shot goes up by Payton and again hustle athleticism and he can't shoot threes yet at all right but this shot in the lane I've seen him hit a couple times right he gets the offensive rebound he can make this shot in the lane he takes it a lot so i'm expecting him to hit that shot and then on the other end again the first time i seen him play i tweeted out that Jaden springer is an athletic wrecking ball that was the only thing i could say at that time and here you see him helps his celtics teammates but he gets the two-hand block 
on Sasser and he forced the miss. Again, you want to see traits. What can this player bring if he can put it all together? At the very least, you've seen athleticism and the way he plays hard every time. Porzingis challenges the first shot. He comes from the backside and smacks Wiseman's shot and he forced the miss. Again, POA defense, pressuring Sasser at half court, not allowing him to get into the pick and rolls easy. Here, he rejects the screen the first time. Jaden beats him to the spot, forces him to do a spin move, and then Sasser tries to play hide and go seek under the Wiseman screen to no avail. Springer stays on him and he forces a pass out to the wing. And then again, athleticism, shot goes up. He's jumping up, trying to get the offensive rebound over James Wyman. He gets it. He's aggressive, snatches it away, and gets the pass to speed for the three. And then in transition, he is a really good passer, and jump passes seem to be something that he's good at because, again, his athleticism, he's able to get up with the hang time, jumps past Sasser, goes into Ivy, and he dumps it off to Jordan Walsh for the dunk. Here, shot goes up. O'Shea and Walsh do the dirty work, and here's that shot I was talking about. That one dribble pull up in the lane that fader he has that shot and then lastly another jump pass the camera angle doesn't really show it as it should but you can clearly see here he gets the spin move sass oh sass almost fell on that but he gets the spin move and he's in the air right athleticism hang time and he's able to pass out the Peyton Pritchard for the three gets the assist but that is the video again if you enjoyed it please leave a like subscribe and share to any and everyone that you can just read out there a little bit more and i'll see you guys in the next video but this is nick peace